this is like goes back to what we were saying like how do you start a business you have to be confident like number one you have to be confident if you're not confident in your skills then you need to do everything possible yeah to to get confident to get good at your skill because if you're not good at your craft you're not gonna last in, in, in anything and we're here to give you wisdom Hmm? I didn't even know what field I wanted. I didn't even know what engineering was. But it was like your serious I care a lot about this Dai Lopez guy, huh? Give you your knowledge. Habimi, I'm gonna give you wisdom. I'm gonna teach you a couple of things. I mean, I'm talking like I, like I made it already. I just started. And it's been going <laughs> You're well. gonna throw it away like everything else. <laughs> what do you think I got this from, huh? E commerce. Social media. Training. Real estate. Marketing. Everybody that wasn't really paying attention thought I was just like 3D printing things. The people that like were paying Yeah, that's, from, that's another conversation. <laughs> that's, what, what is your business, first of all? Let's talk about that. I caught into engineering because like I like like making products. And I love Shark Tank. I love like watching like people like pitch ideas and yeah. get like a deal. And I just love the whole negotiation tactics. And it I was love a school too. For yeah, but, but this is where it started because the interest <clears throat> became like from there. Yeah. Um, but then I started like wanting to make my own ideas and then I went and like started getting quotes from other engineers and the fact that I didn't know like what was going on or like like why things were costing so much or what was involved like in, anytime I get in, like, uh, confront that where like I just have no idea yeah like like what's going on I get really uncomfortable and I like and I, and I, need, to, and I need to know yeah. so that's that's like like where like I first like wanted to go to engineering is like like in like right when I graduated high school I came up with an idea and I got quotes from an engineer for a product and then he developed the product, like he got, did some drawings for us. Can but you then, tell us what the product is? <laughs> it was a dumb idea. It was actually the a hookah like flotation device. <laughs> oh, I remember this. Yeah, oh, yeah I remember it was smoke. Yeah, I actually still have the drawing somewhere. Uh, in here. I, what I mean, we thought that was genius at the time. <laughs> I mean, it would be, it was like ideal for like where we were at in our lives. We wanted a hook in the, in the pool or jacuzzi. We wanted a good jacuzzi, wanted but a pool. I think at the time I knew there wasn't that big of a market for it, but I didn't realize like what, like, uh, what went into like bringing a product to market, especially, yeah. uh, injection molding a product. And like, so after we did the drawings, we spent like a few thousand dollars. Um, we, he gave us numbers to manufacturers and we went and got started getting quotes yeah. and uh the mold price was like thirty thousand oh, dollars and we're like like okay this is not a good like for, for like a young guy too like a but i mean it's for anybody that's a very expensive yeah i mean i wanted to test this idea out i didn't really want to um i didn't really want to like make i don't think it was gonna go anywhere like huge i wasn't mm -hmm. like that invested in it like mentally it was very easy for me to disconnect from it but we we did put some money into it like a few thousand dollars and like to me like at the time that was like a, like a lot of money yeah. and i did it with a friend at the time who had more money than me and that experience was like really like a like a game changer for me because first of all i didn't like that the engineer like wasn't upfront about how much like a, like a, what things were gonna cost like after we were done with the designs, mm -hmm. and and when we did run into that to that the uh, roadblock, he had no like alternative solutions. He had no like path to like overseas manufacturing. He had no path to like uh, any other alternative. He had he he really didn't have any. He had the manufacturers that he's worked with in the past and that he's comfortable offering to you, but he had no other solutions. Mm -hmm. And it was like, wait, I just want to test this idea out. Like I don't need to go straight to manufacturing yeah but for me like this idea was not that great of an idea let's like i'll be honest about it the the flotation hookah device was like a was like an interesting idea for all of us at the time and like i just really wanted to smoke i really wanted the flotation device in the in the pool hookah i think we're at the flamingo hotel in vegas yeah i saw that idea i was like oh dude what if we had what if we could just cruise around in the pool and just like smoke our hookah to give context we're all into hookah. Yeah, we love. We them. love smoking hookah. <laughs> okay, <Yeah. laughs> we love smoking hookah. Yeah, and especially at that time, which was what like this was you're talking about like eight years ago. Yeah, I was like eighteen. So you're eight, you were like yeah, yeah you're seventeen, eighteen, and we all loved hookah, and we loved pool parties, and we loved being in the water. Yeah, but we couldn't bring the hookah in, in the, the water. <laughs> the big dilemma. <laughs> so this, so you're trying to solve a need based on based on what you desire. Yes. Basically the problem, but just just too much money to get just even a prototype is what you're saying. Like, yeah. So in that case, like if somebody came to me with that same idea, I would tell them, and they said, we want to manufacture this. I would tell them like, hold your horses. 
don't even think about manufacturing until we test this uh. and test this product and we know it works and you know there's a market for it. Mm -hmm. That's like my entire like company Pieces. goal <laughs> is like, and I create like affordable prototypes like, and the, that will test the product, test the market, you know, and then we can redesign. And then if it's, if it does pass those tests, then we can go to manufacturing and then we could go to ma like mass production and start selling and building a business out of this product. Mm. But you can't just build a business out of a product until you know that this product is viable in the marketplace. Yeah, proof of concept. Yeah, proof of concept prototyping. And really like 3D printing um, is like opened that door for me. And so back to the, the beginning of the story, I went to that, I had no interest. I always knew I loved business. I love Shark Tank. I love making products. Me, my, my entire family, we're all builders. My dad loves building. My yeah. brother loves building. Um, all of us, I think, love building. And um, so I knew I wanted to create things. And I knew I wanted to, um, like, be different in that way. Yeah. But I didn't know what I wanted to major in. I, I thought business would be a good major for me. But I really had, like, that experience for me was, like, I was like, okay, I don't know. Like, let's say I do come out with a great product. Yeah. I have no idea how to bring it to market. Like, let's, like, I've, and you know what? That was the best idea to test it out on. And I lost the money, but it was, a, like, a valuable lesson. Mm -hmm. I have no idea how to bring a product to market. I have no idea what it takes. I have no idea how much. product to market? Like, uh, like, the hookah device. I, like, I have no idea. Like, like, like I have this idea. Oh, got it. What yeah. steps do I take to get to, to, to get it to the consumer's hand? Mm-hmm. I was trying to rush that process and go straight to the consumer's hand. Yeah. But when really what I should have been doing is testing the product. So, um, so I started like getting interested in like engineering and considering it as a as a degree. Uh, my dad did mechanical engineering, but he never like really worked as an engineer. He yeah. was a business guy, and I always thought we were really alike. So, I thought maybe I would just go straight to business instead. But that experience helped, like you know, brought me back to like thinking about doing engineering as a degree. Yeah. And so, I got an internship at a at a company in uh, Santa Ana, like TMX Manufacturing, mm -hmm. and they were like a straight machine shop. And this was like probably the best like decision I ever made like in my life. Um, I went with like a suit and everything. I did like I, it was like embarrassing. Like they were just dressed up in t-shirts. They thought it was it's weird. So funny how yeah you think about that too. I was like really nervous about going because I was young and I and I was you know a freshman in college, and I went there and I wanted to like go to. Uh, I went there and I dressed up to the T and they thought it was weird. They asked me if I had any experience. I had no experience. Um, just, by telling, just nothing. Just by knowing how you dress. Yeah, <laughs> actually, yeah, because it's a machine shop. It's a, a machine shop is where they manufacture parts. It's like where they manufacture yeah. metal parts. It's not an engineering firm where you're sitting behind yeah, a actually. computer and designing. You're you're like you're With your hand. cutting metal. You're 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 on assembly, running assembly lines, um, inspection, expediting on. orders. It's very very hands on. It's a, this is like this is manufacturing. This is like what I wanted. I wanted to see like that process. Yeah. I wanted to like, and it was really like comforting to like get into that. Like to be into that world, yeah, yeah. and I knew I wanted to like get this job because I and I didn't know why, but I knew I wanted it. And you know they they turned me down and like right away they said like we don't really we're not really hiring right now we're not really trying to I'm like let me just show up tomorrow, and then uh, if you guys do, if you guys don't like me I'll just leave like you don't even have so to pay me did. yeah then so like the like a weekend like they 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 had like a back order and like they had me and they asked if i could stay till like 8 p.m and i, and I was already there from 9 a.m and i stayed and i just like I stayed wow. there the entire day and then they you know then they started like giving me money here and there then they hired me as like an, an intern and then eventually i became like an employee and i and uh i was on and off employment there but i but overall i think i worked there for three years but i learned everything like i learned like from like when you order the materials, the raw materials, like when you order the metal, you machine the metal, you send it to the next machine to actually like get, machine out the details, then you send it to inspection, okay? And then I was working a lot in inspection. Inspection is like, okay, this, like these drawings right here are for this part. Yeah. They have, they're supposed to have these dimensions, the inspection department, Right when it comes off the, the machine, it has a document and it has all these dimensions. And the inspection department is supposed to like uh, verify that these dimensions are correct. And like they'll have like critical dimensions that you know like that that should be passed. Yeah. Um. 
so like and this is like where all the chaos is like the inspection department and I, and I, and I loved it like, the, like everybody was like people were getting fired like every Tuesday at this end oh, sh- because this is like where like because the the company where I was working at they were manufacturing parts for SpaceX which okay. was eighty percent of their business so SpaceX is a very like they inspect That's their pretty crazy. We inspect the parts in house, and then they inspect the parts when it arrives at their factory. If mm-hmm. anything is wrong with it, they immediately send it back. So, like one, if we mess up on, if the inspection department messes up, everything, the, the company just lost twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, and they get like yelled at, and they get in, you know, like it's a big deal. But whatever, this this process was like super important for me. I saw everything, and you know what? Like, I think a lot of kids like would have like not like that experience they would have not liked the yelling Why? they would have not liked oh, okay. the chaos they would have not liked the uncertainty and i and i really loved it i love like the like the, every every bit of it I, this was like manufacturing this is but like why did you love it because i knew this is like if i if i understood this okay i could go to school and learn design i could go to school and learn cad if i understood like the machinist the manufacturing side how parts come in, what people are expecting on like the customer level and okay. the manage- management level. If I can understand that process, I could always learn how to design. I could always go to school and learn engineering. So you, how, how old were you at this point? Well, this is like 18, 19-ish. This is before like... This is, I was at Saddleback Community College. That's yes, before university. Yeah, I didn't even <laughs> declare my major yet. I didn't declare my major until after this. So you're getting all this experience, like real world experience, in a field that you essentially are thinking about being in before you even get into like the studying part like yeah i didn't even know what field i wanted i didn't even know what engineering was but I it was like it was kind of you were kind of like, yeah, I was feeling, like yeah. attracted to that yeah. that feel like you were kind of appealed by it uh, yeah I, I really didn't know what engineering was it was like embarrassing like i think like i really like I, you know me if you know me for years i i hate not knowing like yeah. i hate being the guy in the room that doesn't know something <laughs> that's true <laughs> You gotta dip your feet in everything. And that experience like really like put me in an uncomfortable situation where I didn't know and I made a mistake and I made and I lost a few thousand dollars and to me that was a lot at the time. That's like losing like a hundred thousand dollars today, you know, on that first product. So like really put this like uncomfortable feeling like where I need to learn this in, I need to learn how to make products. That's it. And after uh, after like I got this job, like a few months in, I I got introduced to three D printing, and I was like, oh wow, like this is what I needed. This is like you could print a model, and you could have a prototype in hand same day, and not have to go to manufacturing and spend twenty five thousand dollars on a mold. Yeah. I could print a model. I could take something from the computer and three D print it in mm-hmm. a plastic, and test this product, and then go to manufacturing. Like I was like, that's what I needed to know. Uh, before we spent all that money mm. and like like for like like this is like a 3d printer and like the plastic spool filament this is like really like like uh settled the argument that mm. i was having with myself i knew like i was like okay i'm gonna study engineering that's it like oh got it like once i saw 3d printing i'm like oh if i learn how to design products because you can't 3d print something unless you have the 3d model unless you know how to do the 3d design so I'm like, okay, all I'll do is learn how to engineer and 3D design. And then I could use this machine to print products. Like any idea of, I, let's say I come up with that idea, me and you come up with an idea right now mm-hmm. for like a, a specific cup. I could go on the computer right now, design it, and we could have a physical model in our hand that we could test in a few hours. Like that's an insane thing that, that, that didn't exist before. So did this all happen like timing wise? Like was pretty good because three D printing happened recent, right? It lasts like ten like ten years, and like the last like five years, it's like gotten really popular. Okay. So I got in, I got in it like right, right. like right when it was like starting to gain some traction, and like, but I still was like in the early stages, like where it, like so I I convinced my parents to like, get me a three D printer, and my mom like always like up, she said, uh, "You're gonna throw it away like everything else." <laughs> <laughs> so finally like after like begging and playing like I finally got them to give you it to go. <laughs> after after my freaking failure of the hookah the floating hookah device, I like I convinced them to give me six hundred dollars like to fit uh, to buy the to buy the three D printer. And uh, my dad never said no to me. It was always encouraging, but my yeah, my mom, like I know this guy's on to something. <laughs> my dad was very encouraging always, but uh, my mom was always a skeptic. And but 
I I need that's another conversation. But I need I needed the skepticism to 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 work harder and like be, to stay motivated. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But basically, yeah. Once I, once I found out that like so I could if I learned how to engineer if I learned how to three D design, I can create a product like a prototype working prototype that I could test and verify that this is an actual uh, part that the market needs. Mm-hmm. So. So like what like what 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 part like led you to finding out about three D printing? Was there like a connecting or was like the what was the dots that were connecting oh. you from like the, your, what you're passionate about to like landing on oh shit I should get a three D printer? Like, well, the the guy I was working for like at the company the 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 main person I reported to the engineer. He was a, like a three D printing like enthusiast. Like he was one of like the earlier guys in it. So mm-hmm. he really had built like a few of his machines. So he uh, he uh, showed me how to like use the printer. He showed me like he introduced me to the whole like idea. And he like was very enthusiastic about it. And he was like very uh, he like he he inspired me to like to learn more about it. Mm, so okay, then, so he introduced you to yeah. it. Yeah, and then I built. Then I got the kit. I built my own machine. I got really like good at like troubleshooting machines because at the time, these like things would fail. Like every, every five prints, they'll fail. Like mm-hmm. so, you have to re- you have to you spend like a few hours fixing it. Yeah. Well, you now, built your own too. Yeah. After yeah. So then the company ended up rehiring me to like build them a three D printer. TMX. Yeah. So then so then I got then went I went back there and then I got another job for them to to build a three D printer for them, um, for their manufacturing like for test fixtures and. Um, Stuff. So then, then I went to university, and then I st- just studied engineering, and then, and then I actually like developed all my skills, and then I, you know, I did the USD three D printing club. I always like tried to take like leadership positions, and always like tried to like really get the most out of my degree, because I knew because I knew that this was gonna happen like eventually. But while I was at school, I, I was always asking questions, mm-hmm. like industry related questions. And I was working on projects for clients at school, and anytime I had a question, like let's say I ran into an uh, issue with a client, like today, if I run an issue with a client today, I can't call my professor and ask him for free consulting advice. <laughs> but when you're at school and you have and you, and, and you have a client yeah. that needs something done, you can go to your professor and ask him for some cons- free consulting advice. And not only that, they have the resources to make the to help you make the device. So I really took advantage of like of school itself. Like if and and every way I could to like prepare me for this point, um, but right now like yeah yeah so after I worked a little bit in the in the industry um, in injection molding I uh, I decided to start my own business and I did that because I did that because I knew I had a route I already had clients I already had something going on um, I had the, the you know the the hookah products that yeah. we're manufacturing right now. Um, these these little mini hookahs, I I was already while I was working at you know a company like somebody inquired me about it, so we decided to he wanted to expand his product line. So I had this in my back pocket. I had some money to keep me safe, you know. And then during school, this was like actual I was after school after I graduated, and while I was like working in another company, and I decided to go off on my own. Yeah. But I wouldn't have gone off on my own and, t- and took that took that next leap if I didn't have like a direct path to income. And I did. I had this like product. I had a chance to go to China. This company gave me a chance to go. One of my clients gave me a chance to go to China and learn about manufacturing. And then okay. Uh, so how did that person find you, or that client, or like? How I always that? put myself out there, no matter what. Like when I was at when I was at church, when I was with friends, or what. I always oh. put myself out there. That I had the the three D printing club. If somebody called or emailed the three D printing club and they said, "Hey, we want to uh, prototype a product." Can we can the 3D printing club print it for us? I'd be like, yeah, I have a design service. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> I always like was putting myself out there for that conversation. I always wanted to, to gain experience. I mean, I'm talking like I like I made it already. I just started, and it's been going well. <laughs> I know, but, but like, you have a long like a long history of experience, like since, since 18. I feel like yeah. in this field. That I mean, some people who are at your age like are just starting. You know? Yeah, I think a lot of people think that I just came up with this like uh, like uh, like a couple days ago, and then I just started like to make a company. Well, that's the thing. Like, yeah, I've been this has been brewing in my head for the last like six years. Like, I've been thinking about like you know yeah. all these things, and I've along the way I've been making my own products. I filed for a patent. I've you know I've done like design work on the side, 
you know, I was always like trying to like challenge myself to get more. But yeah, now that you're bringing up the flow and smoke concept, the entire thing. I yeah. didn't realize that um, <laughs> it all started from that. Yeah, like, from that thing. Like it like lit a fire in you, where you're just like, yeah. It's, that's why I like to do these type of things. You got to figure out like where the the meat of everything comes from. Yeah. You know? But um. Yeah, but that's like brings up like like an interesting thing like like a the, like parallels like. Yeah, at times we get confused, but starting a business has always been like an option for me, you know, like for, mm-hmm. and it's, I know it's been for you too, and, and you know, all our family. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know why, like exactly, but it's like a thing al- along with immigrants, but at least I can speak for our family. Um, they always taught us to be like owners, like they always taught us to have ownership of everything, yeah. of our house. They, they always like criticized renting a property or renting a car they always wanted us to be an owner like yeah. they always like you know they get little comments here and there that like you know like that pushed us away like mentally from working at somewhere too long or or, or you know just staying in a rental and not yeah. Yeah. and always being in the position to like take care of your family no matter what i feel like it's you know it comes like the idea but maybe I mean I went to business school too so I have some type of fundamental even though business school is you know it's, I wouldn't advise anybody to go to business school you can just acquire the skills by doing but like it's just something that is kind of common sense too, like starting your own business if you're good at something if you're talented at it if you're passionate about it you you just pursue it and then throughout the way you start learning as you do it right like I feel like that's most of it wouldn't you say like even though you started like six months ago, um, you know, like, what has your experience been like with that? Like, would you say like, for somebody who needs to start or who wants to start a business, like how, how do they go about starting it? You know, is it, cause so many people overthink it too. Like so many people overthink starting their own business, starting like that they just kind of, they stand still and they don't know how to, they don't know how to actually like take the right step to do it. Yeah. It's all confidence thing. And like, if you don't think something's possible, you, you, you put a mental block in your head, you know, the, that you, that you can't achieve this, that you can't like, you can't go there. The sooner that you put, to get rid of that mental block that, you know, that that's just possible that you are, you gain that confidence that you can do, that you can start your own business, that you can run, uh, like a company and you can delegate tasks to people under you not just confidence not just blind confidence but also like like tools like knowledge like preparation yeah like some type of experience in the industry you can't just start a business there's no way um, that's true like you've been deve- like you've been developing movies like your entire life um ever since like you got a camera the second somebody gave you a camera you 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 picked it up and you were and you're practicing you this was like destined for you no matter like what yeah if you decided to do it or not you always had this talent i think you had the confidence to that you knew that you could make good like videos and film yeah. but you didn't have the confidence at the in the beginning um to start that to to actually run a company in your case i feel like it was more like you were very confident in your skills we all knew you were like were good, good at videos but you weren't that confident in your ability to run a company and uh, and delegate employ uh, and yeah, I mean, it's still an issue, like you know. And I think we're both going through that right now. We're going through like these logistics, like like how like yeah. how do you project manage and how do you? Okay, but like you know, when you talk about conference and when I see like, this, I think this is with you and all your siblings too, like, or like you know, especially like Nicole, for instance, or your dad, you, like, your family, like when you guys talk about business, like, or like when you're talking to people, you don't like hesitate to like bring up what you're talking like what you're doing you know like what like your business is we always put ourselves out there you always put always. yourself and i and i think that has probably accelerated things as well 100 percent, because the people already knew like kind of what i was doing the people that were paying attention everybody that wasn't really paying attention thought i was just like 3d printing things the people that like were paying yeah attention, that's, were, that's another <laughs> conversation too. The, the people that were paying attention knew like that they could either like uh, use me for something or like they knew I was a young kid I was ambitious and that and that yeah, I was an engineer and that they could that we could help each other he had a, they yeah could, for this case he had an established business and I 
had some engineering skills and some manufacturing skills, and he decided to use that. He we we learned from each other, and like now we're launching uh, these products out together. We have like like four thousand units coming out. And this is just a conversation that led to this is a conversation at this, church. This is a conversation at church. <laughs> You're saying what's up? He's saying what's up? I didn't even want to go that day. I, <laughs> and that's another thing too. You always like if you do go out if you do go out somewhere, have and don't waste your time talking to people about nothing or don't waste your time talking to somebody that you're going to see tomorrow okay <laughs> talk to somebody that you're not going to see for another year well, that's like a that's like a reframe in your head that people don't do like i mean some people are just kind of hesitant or shy towards that you yeah. know you used to honestly i learned that from you like when we were kids like, uh, cause I was, I was so comfortable like with you, like, cause you would be at our house so often. You're my older cousin. Yeah. I would be like so comfortable hanging out with you. Um, uh, like when we went to family parties, I wasn't comfortable with our older cousin. So I would like sit there and cling on to you yeah. and you would, you would kind of shove me off and be like, Hey, I want to talk to my cousins that I, I'm going to see you tomorrow. You idiot. <laughs> let, me, <laughs> let me talk to these people. And that, like, honestly, that like put it in my head. I'm like, yeah, you're right. Like, I should be talking to people that I'm not gonna see for a while again. Well, that's an interesting way to think. Yeah, no, that's well, pretty. I, that's <laughs> <laughs> moral of the story is to strike conversations up with people that you know are new and see where it goes. It's because that's led to a lot of opportunities. Um, the weirdest of opportunities. The weirdest. So that kind of goes into like how you know. Things that like I don't like I like I'm like how did this even like come about and like it was this one little conversation this one little like seed that I planted in somebody's head yeah like for like two years ago and they always like thought about it and you know like later like every time I saw them we kept talking we kept chatting and we kept putting ideas into each other's head and then eventually when I think when I was ready to start a company they were ready to use my service. And that's another thing too. Like before you start a business, like first you get the confidence, first you get the money, okay? Then, it, then you get the power, okay? Then you get the ladies. First you get the confidence, okay? Then you make a plan, okay? Then you make a business. Like you have to make the plan. You have to know like yeah. what, what, how are you getting income? So you, in the beginning, uh, you were generating income project by project basis. Yeah. And it was doing like really well for you, okay? But you had dead months, you had slow months. You didn't have reoccurring income. You started getting reoccurring income when you started doing the month to month subscriptions and started doing social media management. Uh, yeah. But it took you a while to develop those programs. So while, here's my, like, like I think like, I think my advice, like I was very like, like uh, uh, useful, like with my time. While, while everybody was doing the website and the design and everything, like uh, I had the people doing my logo design, my website design, my contact, like all that stuff. I was developing service packages. I was developing ways like how am I gonna get recurring income. I was like figuring out like those ways of how I'm going to yeah. stabilize this business. While, cause th that logo, like you know when you, when you start a company, the designing the logo, building the website, that's like a bunch of bullshit and it takes like a few months to set up that we'll few die there yeah that few months is the most important thing in the world use every think about everything else try not to think about the 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 the, uh, the content writers the website designer and the and the graphic designer they're going to develop your logo they're going to develop your website just make sure you give them the what they need to do it after you give them what you, they need to do it let them do what they're doing and then while, uh, and use that time to yeah. like develop your service packages. How are you gonna? How are you gonna make like big, like, close big deals, like big project deals, and then how are you gonna keep that consistent income like flowing? Yeah. Like, well, because I could have, I could have, I could have waited a little bit of time. You know, I could have. I think I took advantage of that time a lot. Like, and I and it and it, and it saved me in the long run. Yeah. Because okay, this is the biggest thing. The biggest thing with you. People have this misconception that you only do 3D printing, right? Yeah. Like, especially with our family. Everyone's like, oh, I didn't even know Chris. Like, like I didn't know he started a business. I didn't know. Like, I thought he just does 3D printing. You've. It's kind of like me, too. Like, people think I just do, um, you know. I make products. 3D printing was a tool I was introduced to early on in my college career and it and it get, it was like moses parting the red sea i was like oh 
I was like, it immediately all made sense to me. And then that was like my gateway to like pursue engineering as a career. Something I never pursued when I was young, like thought I was going to major in when I was younger. I was always thought I was just going to stay into business. 3D printing is only a tool. Like I do like 3D printing is like, like 10% of like my business. My business is somebody comes in to, to my office, sits down on the, uh, on the table. There's, I have this product idea. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what to do. Okay. That's that's literally the conversation. That's it. I don't know what to do. <laughs> no idea. And I'm like, okay. I love making products. My the reason why I started this is because I love to make products. I love business. I love deal. I love all that stuff. 